Hey! How's it going? My name is Thomas Brush, I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe. I'm also about to finish a game called Once Upon a Coma. Click the link in the description if you guys want to see those games, wishlist them, and also support on Patreon, get a free copy of my game Pinstripe. Okay, so today I'm excited because the announcement for Half-Life Alex came out yesterday. Well, that's not true. I'm recording this video like six hours before the announcement, but I'm gonna pretend that we're celebrating. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to look into character design. Specifically, we're gonna focus on Gordon Freeman, and I'm gonna show you guys how we can make Gordon Freeman a 2D character. And there's a huge difference between 3D characters and 2D characters. A lot of you wanna make 2D games, so this is gonna be a great tutorial for you on how to make a 2D character in Photoshop and make it work for Unity. Come on, let's go. Now before we get started guys, I wanna introduce you to our sponsor, GameDevHQ.com. This is a really cool website that aims at empowering you with tools and training to become a game developer. Their pro membership offers a game developer certification track through 2D, 2.5D, and 3D Unity authorized courses. Once you gain your certification, you can then build your game using Filebase, a brand new plugin built into Unity 3D that gives you the freedom to create. With over a thousand game assets like weapons, weapons, blades, buildings, environments, robots, even complete levels, they're instantly available for you to create your game. Now this company has supported Unity Game Development Online for years, and they have brought us an affordable product. For all this training, the tools, assets, it's just $9.99 a month or $99 a year. Of course, we have a great deal if you use the code THOMASBRUSH. Click the link in the description and you can get a annual rate of just 79 bucks. So first I just want to talk about logo design because it's very similar to 2D design. As you can see the Unity logo looks great at all sizes. The same is true with something like Mickey Mouse. Um, the silhouette of Mickey Mouse looks good at all sizes. Now with a 3D character like Gordon Freeman, not so much because it's 3D, it's different, there's a lot of detail. So I'm going to show you how we can make a 2D character using the same kind of principles as logo design so that it looks good at all sizes and that's really important with 2D. Um, you want to keep things simple like I'm doing here using very simplistic shapes um, to ensure that at any screen size, especially when the character is running around and he's maybe like 100 pixels tall, that he looks like Gordon Freeman. What are some key features about Gordon Freeman that we could focus on with this 2D design? So as you can see, I'm using very simplistic shapes. Uh, I tend to use two tools. Um, the rectangle tool, um, the rectangle shape tool, and I often add a rounded, as you can see, a very steep rounded angle. Um, so in the, in the case of this body here, um, I think it's like 25 to 50 pixels of rounded angles. Um, and now I'm gonna just sort of taper off, add some perspective, and then um, some warping to this body. So it started out as a simple rectangle, and then it end up, ended up getting warped to look like a tapered male chest, broad shoulders, a thinner waist, and again, re rounded rectangle here with the arms, and I'm just copying and pasting them and just changing the colors. Now an important thing to note about these arms is I'm gonna do one arm first, make sure it's perfect, make sure I like it, and then I'm just gonna flip it and duplicate it. And this is also true in 3D design. In 3D design, there is something called a mirror effect in Blender. So all you have to do is design one side. Now I'm not sure there's anything like that in Photoshop, but the same rules apply here. Now the only difference is on the right arm here, we're gonna have his weapon, and this could be true in any character, you have a weapon of some kind in the right arm. So there's not a, you know, one one to one mirror effect here. There's a little bit, di a little difference between the right arm and the left arm. So as you can see, I'm going to finish the crowbar or the weapon before I actually finish his hand. So now that we've got the crowbar done, we can finish the hand and make it look like it's grasping the crowbar. Now let's talk about color really quickly as we move along. Color is so important in 2D design, and I guess in 3D as well. Um, you know, five, six years ago when I was creating characters or illustrations, I would just choose colors randomly. I wouldn't really um, have a palette or, you know, a certain amount of colors that I would use over and over again. And this was problematic because if I didn't like a color, I'd have to change 
20 different shades of colors to get it to look right. In this case, you can see I'm choosing basically three colors. Other than the crowbar um, being red, there's only three colors here. There's some shades of gray, but overall everything is sort of being used over and over and over again. And again, this makes it really simple to get this illustration to look good in the abstract. Now let's talk about what it means to look good in the abstract. What I mean is we want the basic shapes and colors to be perfect. As you can see, I'm not really adding any detail here. Um, I'm getting the basic shapes down. You can never fix a bad illustration in the abstract. What I mean is if, if you scroll, zoom out and look at it and you can't tell what it is, and it doesn't really look like a human form, or if you squint your eyes or blur your eyes, and it doesn't look like a human form, it doesn't look like maybe a male form or a female form or whatever character you're going for, there's no way to fix it. No matter how much detail you add to your character, it's just not gonna fix it. So now let's go ahead, now that we've got everything looking good in the abstract, now we can start adding details. I zoomed out, everything looks good, so now I can go ahead and start adding details to Gordon Freeman's face. Now, again, this is 2D, so we wanna make sure that we, we have very little real estate to work with, right? And so what I wanna do is make sure that the basic key features of Gordon Freeman's face work. So I'm just gonna steal a Ray-Ban uh, sunglasses or eyeglasses silhouette here just because we don't have a lot of time. Um, obviously, if you guys wanna avoid getting sued, first, don't make Gordon Freeman your character. But <laughs> second, don't make Ray-Ban sunglasses or don't copy and paste them. But in this case, just for this video, we're gonna just copy and paste them really quick. And then we're gonna add some simple eyes. And I like to use just black dots for my eyes. That's my sort of uh, go-to look. And I'm gonna sort of cut them in half and make them look squinted, like he's constantly uh, in emotional turmoil. At least that's the way I always think about Gordon Freeman. He's a moody scientist. All right, so let's go ahead and just change the color of his neck. It was gray. Now the problem is here, the gray blended in with his beard, and that was not good when we're zooming out because it looks like he has one giant beard. That's the thing about 3D versus 2D. Sometimes you have to change things. Um, in the 3D version of Gordon Freeman, he has a gray neck piece going all the way up to his face, up to his uh, chin, but in 2D it just doesn't work. So now we're working on the hair, and right now it looks super nerdy. It looks like he just combed his hair um, really smooth and nerdy. So what we're gonna do is actually add a, just a little bit of detail to the hair to make it look a little bit messy. Um, I found that, again, especially with hair, you wanna get the basic shape down first, and then you can add these details later. All right, so things are looking pretty good with Gordon Freeman. I'm just gonna zoom in and out here, adjust some shapes a little bit. Um, and now this is the most important part. And I knew that this was gonna be um, crucial. That's why I left a blank gray canvas on his chest to be able to do this portion. And I'm gonna guess and check here and, and start adding in some shapes to see what kind of um, details we can add to this without it looking too bad. <laughs> and I say bad because when you zoom out, that logo was just too small. So we can't really make this chest plate look like the 3D version. I'm sure some of you could figure it out, but in my case here with the limited time we have, we're just gonna make it really big and we're gonna change the chest plate just a little bit. And I'm sure I'm not the only one, um, but going from 3D to 2D, again, you, you really have to make some judgments or judgment calls on what, what stuff you're gonna change. And in this case, that chest plate, I'm gonna change. Now we're ready to start adding some shading and lighting. So I'm gonna add a background image, blur it, um, just to make things feel like he's in an environment. That really helps when you're creating some shading. Now this is my favorite part of illustration. When you start adding shading to your 2D character, everything starts to pop and it looks really professional. My go-to weapon of choice, not my weapon, <laughs> my tool of choice when doing lighting, guys, is the gradient tool. And all I use is a black to a transparent black, so it just fades. And that's when I'm adding my 
uh, shadows and lowlights. And then my go-to weapon or tool of choice for highlights is the same thing except white with an overlay blend mode. So as you can see, I'm adding just shading to everything that is on top of something else. So as you can see, for example, on his right arm, since he's got that orange plate overlapping his bicep, I've just added some shading below it to make it look like something's on top of it. Now you can see I'm adding some highlights and those highlights are, um, again, just a white gradient. So for example, take a look at that little I can't, I don't know what else to call it, but metal underwear. I've added a, a white highlight towards the top of it because as you can see, I've added sun shafts to the top right hand corner of this image. And the reason I did that was to constantly remind myself where the light is coming from. There is nothing more important in your lighting than obviously remembering where your lighting is coming from. So I've just added some uh, sun shafts to remind, remind me where I'm going to be adding these uh, highlights and again we're just using an overlay blend mode that makes things look more orange and vibrant as opposed to just a white flat um, gradient over top so I'm just gonna add some details to the crowbar here make it look a little bit 3d and now it's important to remember that the face is when you're adding lighting to a face you want to be really really careful and in fact I've made some mistakes already here um, looking back and this this took me about an hour to illustrate so I'm actually talking over it um, as a time lapse but I've made some mistakes here with the face you've got to be really really careful with lighting in the face because it when you zoom out when you look at your character from the size that they're going to be um, it's really interesting to see that the face can easily get muddy and and blend in with itself and it might be hard to see exactly what you're looking at so I've made a few mistakes here um, honestly I can't quite put a finger on what the mistakes are but I know one thing when I zoom out the face is a little bit blurry but you know when we're looking up close it's pretty cool um, the shading looks great so I'm just gonna group everything together and actually, you now what am I doing here? Oh, <laughs> I'm adding a little bit of shading to that Half-Life logo. Okay, so now that everything is grouped together, now I can go ahead and start adding even more highlights. And these are very specific highlights to make the thing, make the thing, make the illustration look a lot more illustrative. Now, in the case of go building an actual 2D character that you're going to animate, and we're not gonna animate this character in this video, you would actually add these highlights to each individual element but for me I'm just gonna add it on top of the entire group and on Windows you just hold alt to add a highlight or some lighting effect on top of an entire group so as you can see I'm just using overlay blend mode to add these small highlights to make things pop and it's weird because when you're illustrating you you tend to think that this is the least important part of your illustration and I'm sure there's plenty of other things that are important but this is what makes things makes your illustration look really professional adding these highlights these pops of color to your illustration and now I'm just gonna add some shadows here as well some low lights and use the gradient tool and just add a pulse of low lights to various portions of my character. Now this is sort of, um, it definitely takes practice because you have to use your mind's eye to figure out where the shadows would be. Um, if the sun was at the top right hand corner, where would the shadows be? So you can sort of study this if you want and go back and sort of see what I'm doing here um, that kind of makes sense um, if he was a 3D character. Where would the shadows be? So I'm just adding these in really quickly here. I'm not being too um, specific or or I don't care about the detail as much because again he's gonna be a small character we're not really gonna see him up close and if we do see him up close it'll po probably be cover art and I'll you know add a whole set of details to the cover art um, so I'm not gonna worry about this too much so we're gonna finish up these shadows here and I like to add a half shadow so you can see there's sort of a slice down the center where there's a, a big shadow across the left side of him. Um, that makes him look more like he's a low poly art character. And now we're just gonna add some shadows. And this is where, at, the po at this point, I was illustrating him and I was thinking, man, I should probably just stop because you know this isn't really the point of the video. But I really wanted to make him look epic. So I'm adding some highlights here and I'm gonna start 
adding some details, um, like changing the background color to make him look really cool, make him pop in the foreground. Um, but this, I think this portion of the illustration is actually really important. Um, getting an idea of how your character looks best. And what I've found, and you guys might notice this from a lot of my videos, I like to add some texture um, to my character. So there's this website called pexels.com and there's this paper texture I really like to use and overlay it on top of everything. Um, and then I'm just gonna add the logo and a menu system again. And I say again because I mentioned this in a lot of my videos, but it really helps me to get excited um, about a game by creating a menu system just to get a feeling. Low saturation um, with a vibrant pop of color is definitely um, going to make your character pop. So as you can see here, I've done a low saturation purple and a vibrant opposite color of orange. And there it is. That is our Gordon Freeman in 2D. Pretty cool, right? I think in the end, he looks all right in 2D. I always liked Gordon Freeman. He looks great no matter what dimension he's in. So that's a great, that is a good line. I love that. I just came up with that. That's amazing. All right, if you guys like this video, please hit subscribe, hit the like button, notification bell, leave a comment, and I'll try and answer if I can. I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. And always remember, you can hang out on Patreon and support and get a free copy of Pinstripe. Bye-bye.